This was my last startup. I'm a designer, so I really focused on the user experience. And since I came from an ad agency background, I thought branding was everything. And so I designed and redesigned and, and finally launched six months later and came crashing down. No one wanted it. It wasn't a problem that anyone had. So with these hard lessons learned, I took them and I had another idea for a startup, but this time I approached it differently. Well, I'm a user experience designer and I get a lot of inbound requests from entrepreneurs looking for help with their websites. I was getting so many requests that I wasn't able to respond to them. So I thought, what if I connect them to other user experience designers? Before jumping too readily into the solution, I wanted to understand how big the problem was. How are they solving it themselves? How far are they going in order to solve the problem for themselves? By doing the preliminary exploration, I was hoping I could open up more possibilities and more insights as to how I could solve the problem. So first, I narrowed down my customer segment to bootstrap startup founders. By focusing in on the specific segment, I was able to focus on who to talk to, easily identify the patterns that were happening, and save time. The problem was that they had trouble getting user experience feedback. And of course, we don't define the solution yet because right now we're just trying to understand more about the customer and the problem space. Now, the risk is assumption. Sometimes your risk is assumption can actually be about whether the problem actually exists. But for me, I already had data that this was a problem that these founders were experiencing. So I was pretty certain about that. What I didn't know was to what extent were they willing to go out of their way to solve the problem for themselves. And so that was the risky assumption I chose. If they're happy with their current solutions, then it's a lower incentive for them to go out of the way and use a new service. So that would be even more friction for me to get those customers. I defined the success criteria as 60% and got out of the building. You have to really ask questions around their mentality, action, or behavior. A good way to quantify this qualitative learning is to find out how far did they go to solve the problem for themselves? How many steps did they take? How frustrating was the experience? How satisfied were they at the end of it? Now, what we found was really interesting. We talked to 12 founders, and all of them were actively seeking a better user experience but to varying extents of effort. Most of them were talking to their friends and just getting feedback. But I found nine of them who actually went out of their way and took courses and then they actually went out and hired freelancers by an hourly rate to help them with their UX. They really enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one interaction and the questions that they were able to ask to really better understand their product. So that raised a really interesting question. Well, these founders pay for virtual feedback. We see that they are doing it in person, but they really value the one-on-one -on -one interaction and really value the quality of the designers. So quality was really important. Trust was really important. How do we do that online? Will they pay for it? So now we decided to go into pitch. We can't really go out and do interviews asking, will you pay for this? because what people say and do are very different. So a good way to test this is to set up a landing page and to test if people will actually click through a pay now button to pay for the service that you're selling them. Here's the landing page that we set up. It's clearly indicating the price point, $10. Pay $10 to get user experience feedback on your website from a user experience designer. I set the success criteria to 80% because I thought since this is such a big problem, it should have a higher conversion rate in order for me to proceed. I sent out this landing page to the founders that I talked to. I measured how many people actually clicked on the pay now button. To further measure intent, I actually had a form behind the sign up button to see how many people would actually pay now in order to get the service. So this is a good method to really test how serious they are about solving this problem for themselves. Out of the startup founders that I spoke to and pitched, they all signed up 
filled out the form, and were eager to get their feedback. Some funny feedback that we got here was that the price was too cheap. They were able to afford more. Lesson learned here, I can actually go higher with this price point and they would still pay for it. Next, we're testing the second side of the market because the first part of the market was validated. They have the problem and they're willing to pay for a virtual solution. When I was talking to the founders, they wanted feedback from professional user experience designers. So that's who I focused on. The problem these UX designers were having was maybe getting quick UX consulting work. I knew they were already doing UX consulting, but what if they want a quick, low-touch, virtual way of doing so? And since the founders were already willing to pay for the solution, I decided to go into pitch and pitch the solution to these user experience designers. So my risky assumption was that these user experience designers would consult virtually. I went to UX events and talked to professional UX designers who are doing it for five to ten years. I start off with exploratory questions just to find out who they were, how long they've been doing it, and then I went into pitch to pitch them a virtual solution. Hey, what about consulting online? You do it in person already, what about a virtual solution for low touch, quick UX feedback that you can give to start founders? And the reaction that I got from them was, no. These people were doing it for so long, they already had established client base, they were very picky about their clients, and they refused to work with anyone that they just picked off of a website. Professional designers weren't interested in it, but what was really interesting was every one of them said, yeah, when I first started out, I was eager to just get any gig that I could. When I was in college, when I first graduated, I was looking for any job that came my way. So that was a really interesting insight there. It's not just five to 10 years of experience, it's when they first started out, they were looking for all of these gigs. So possibly recent graduates or college UX designers were more interested in this opportunity. So we zoomed in and focused on recent graduate UX designers or college UX designers and HCI programs. The problem, getting more clients, getting UX work, building up their portfolio. The riskiest assumption here is, will they do this virtually? I set my success criterion to 60% and sent out my next iteration of the landing page. As you can see, this landing page is for a two-sided market. The first side of the market was startup founders and here they can still click through and keep paying. The second side of the market was for user experience designers to submit their portfolio and get UX work. I sent out this landing page to some mailing lists and college programs. We got 184 clicks in those emails. And out of that, we had 37 sign up to be part of this service, which was really exciting, but it was actually really low compared to our success criteria. This is where the art and the science of Lean Startup come into play. You're not just trying to match up the numbers quantitatively. You're trying to figure out what else is going on here. So something really interesting that was happening was out of those people who signed up for the service, they started referring their friends. And how do I know that? I know that because, again, I had a form behind the sign-up button where they would fill it out. And on that form, I had, how did you hear about us? And I started seeing people submitting these forms saying, I heard about it through a friend. My friend told me about this. My friend told me to check this out. That was incredible. So now we focus on delivering a concierge experiment. What a concierge is, is manually delivering the service to test customer satisfaction. How happy are they with your service after you deliver it as promised? And this is my favorite kind of experiment. What you see here is a customer who paid for the service, and he's expecting to get a feedback from a user experience designer. The user experience designer is expecting to get some kind of request from the founder and deliver that feedback back. The magic trick here is that it was all me. I was getting all of these emails from these guys filling out these forms, and then I was getting all of these emails from these designers filling out those forms. And with all this information, I made 16 matches. So the beauty of this process is that it allows you to focus on what to build next. You're able to see the highest frequency and the highest pain points. What is something that keeps happening over and over again? 
And by mapping it out, you're able to really prioritize on what is the most important feature to build next, what is the most important customer request to fulfill. I followed up with each of these founders to find out what were they trying to solve, how satisfied were they with the feedback, how much time did it take for them to get that feedback, what are they going to do next, and that's the most important question. That question really helps me understand what are they thinking and what is a possible um, next step for, for us as a company. Unfortunately, we did not meet our success criteria. People were okay on the experience. They said, yeah, it's cool, I got my feedback, I got what I needed, thanks a lot. And I asked, well, what are you going to do next? And they said, oh, okay, well, I'm going to build it out now or, okay, well, I'm going to have to hire someone to work with me in person. They kept saying, I wish that I had more interaction with these designers. I wish it wasn't just like a one-time email. I wanted to be able to ask them more questions. For us, even though it didn't meet our success criterion, we could still proceed. And the next step would be to iterate because there's something here, but they want more functionality. And that's the whole point of the concierge. You do this service manually until you can't scale it. Then you write the code that you need in order to scale, and then iterate from there. So in the context of everything, you can see we start off at an idea, then we went into exploration interviews, where we're trying to understand the customer and the problem. Once that's validated, we can move into pre-sell, where we're selling the service before actually having anything to sell. And when people are actually paying you for the service, well, congrats, you get to move into concierge where you're delivering the service manually to see if you can actually meet their expectations. Is the solution the way you thought of it? Will it actually meet their expectations? And from the concierge, you get some key insights as to what is the basic, most required functionality to build out first. That allows you to focus and you can build some basic prototypes and create the minimum viable user experience. Thanks.